Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Guys, how are we doing over there? I was doing good Saturday, doing very well Saturday, not so well yesterday. Yeah. I was pretty low on Saturday afternoon when Kawhi <laughs> and my Clippers just stunk it up yeah, against it Dallas yep, and Luka. Yep, yep. And then I wasn't feeling so bad yesterday <laughs> when LeBron and the Lakers stunk it up even worse than the Clippers did. There was a yes, there yep. was. Foul That's smell what and I foul saw. smell. Yeah. I feel like, Shannon, you were posting a lot about that. You know, I, I, I don't they know what happened. visited the restaurant. I was and then I was hacked. The Lakers did the same thing, and that is where we begin. Uh, yes, the Lakers came up short yesterday in the first game of their series against the Suns. LeBron's 18 points was the most of any Laker in the nine-point loss. Anthony Davis didn't help out much more, uh, scoring only 13 points. And after the game, Davis said he took, quote, full responsibility for the loss, adding, there is no way we are winning a game, let alone a series with the way I played. So, Shannon, does AD deserve most or all of the blame here? There's enough blame to go around. I thought, I thought he and LeBron, so Skip, this is a very winnable game for them. You hold a team like Phoenix to 99 points, the defense was impeccable, but offensively, it's just not good enough. Skip, you cannot have, you cannot allow another team's player when he doesn't go get, let's say, 55, 60 points. Devin Booker had 34 points, which was more points than LeBron and AD had combined. He only took three fewer shots than those two combined, which tells me he was ultra aggressive and they were not. That can't happen. Drummond and AD was basically leveled out by DeAndre Ayton as far as rebounding. He had 16. The two combined, I think, had 17. Skip, that can't allow to happen. Now, everybody wants to blame Andre Drummond. And what I'm starting to see is that every time AD has a bad game, they blame Drum. Now, this is the same Drummond that was on the court with AD when he went 42 12, 5, 3, and 3. The only Laker to ever have a stat line like that against the Phoenix Suns just two weeks ago. When he got back and he had that monster game against Portland, Andre Drummond was on the court. Skip, they got crushed on the glass. There are very few teams that can crush the Lakers on the glass because they are one of the few teams that still play conventional, a five, a four, and a three. And they got out rebounded by what, 47 to 33? That's 14 rebounds, Skip. You can't well, lose that. No, they got, no rebounds, no rings. No That's rebounds, no rings. You got crushed on the offensive end. Mm. So. If, if there's no drumming, who's gonna get the go? Who's gonna get the board? Mm. And you can well play AD at the five. Skip AD's made it abundantly clear he does not want to play exclusively at the five. That's if you look at him. AD had some of his best years. Who do you have side him? Boogie, because Boogie played the five and he got an opportunity to play the four last year. Javale, Dwight, he likes playing. Now he'll go to the five. Skip late in the ball game, last five, six, seven, eight minutes. Yeah, I'll play the five, but to have him bang against Aiton, bang against Nurkic, bang against Yoke for the entirety of a game, that's not what he wants to do, and it doesn't serve the Lakers very well. I just felt that this was a very winnable game, considering how well they played defensively. You hold a team to 90, 99, Skip. That's all it took, 99 points. They held him in the fourth quarter to 18, held him in the second quarter to 20 to 21. Mm. The first quarter, they gave up 32, but all the rest of them was under 30. Mm -hmm. But the Lakers are going to have to get, and I love what AD said. AD knows that he needs to play better. He needs to be more aggressive. The problem that I have with AD, AD you just played against Jay Crowder in Miami. You punished him inside. Is that AD sometimes, he's like, oh, yeah, I can shoot this outside shot, I can shoot the three. Yes, you have that ability. But if the shot's not falling, get your butt down on the block, Drop step and go over the top of Crowder. Mm. Now, if you want to get eight and outside, you want to pull him away from the basket, put the ball on the floor and try to get to the rim. I get that. But you should not be shooting jumpers over Jay Crowder from 15 and three-point land. That should not happen. So I'm glad AD said what he said. LeBron knows this is normally a feeling out game. But even as a feeling out game skip for LeBron, this was a very winnable game for the Lakers. I expect to play them. All the Suns did was whole serve. I expect them to play a lot better, AD and LeBron in particular, to play better, and we're going to get game two on Tuesday night. Mm, you guarantee that. I guarantee it. Whew. It is interesting that you were two-and-a-half-point underdogs in this game, and now you're two-point favorite. <laughs> you, 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 they, not, they know, yeah, they know what's up. They know what's up with Chris Paul's, I guess it's his shoulder, his arm. I don't know what it was. I, 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 hold on. Are you making excuses? 
I'm not making excuses. Okay. I'm I'm wondering what happened to Chris Paul with 924 left in the first half. He said he heard a crack. He, you heard a crack? Right. Well, that's that's bad. That's bad. Right? And yet he reached down his arm. Right. And it looked like your your basic NFL stinger. <laughs> right, How many right. stingers have you had right, in your right. career? <laughs> yes, that's where what it you get like. hit somewhere up in the cervical region right. up in your neck, and suddenly it flashes down the nerves down your arm. Well, that's what normally Something happens. Something got pinched. You got you get hit yeah. from the side, and the head does. Because in real time, Skip, you couldn't see it. I, I was like, what? What, what? That, what happened to you? I I, st- I couldn't <laughs> see it after the <laughs> replays. I'm saying. He hit into Cameron Johnson. His head hit Cameron John- Johnson's right arm, I right, think, and right. kind of whiplashed him right. a little bit. Leap. And he got a bolt right. down his arm. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you know and I know, usually those pass, right? right? Mm-hmm. You can shake it off, right. you can stretch it out a little bit, and usually it passes. I don't think you can take an, a pain-killing injection no, no, for it because I don't know what you, – you can't stop what no, happened at the, no. at the disc. You don't want to dead the nerve because that's all the feeling. That's the sensation you have, okay. so you – Okay, so let's get this straight. So he's he is completely, utterly handicapped, starting with 924 left in the first half. Mm-hmm. That was in the second quarter. And he played, Chris Paul did, the whole second half with with little to no use of his right arm, Correct. which shocked me. It, it surprised me he came back. Right. I, I've seen him be out for long stretches of playoff games, mostly with mm-hmm. hamstring pulls, but this wasn't clearly a pull. Right. First, I thought maybe he wrecked his shoulder, like right. he had some kind of Dis- structural dislocated or something, damage yeah. to his shoulder, but apparently that wasn't going on. Right. So he comes back, but but he can't even dribble with his right hand because he can't even control the right. basketball right. with his right hand. Right. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and then... The shots were mostly air balls where he's just kind of shooting yeah. sideways. He actually made one. He made was, one of a coup. I still was, don't know how he like, made it. It was a miracle shot that he it, made that, a little, little jump shot from about the elbow, I mm-hmm. guess. Made that one. But you're telling me that, that the Lakers couldn't pull out a game in which Chris Paul is completely handicapped on offense, especially for the whole second half, mm-hmm. and... You shot 19 free throws in this game before they shot one right. at home yeah. in front of, they announced 11,000. It felt like it had 18,000 right. there because it, it was loud and it got crazy in there. But but the visiting team shot 19 free throws before the home team shot one? Yeah, it seemed like they missed 12 of them too. Okay, well, that's a whole nother issue. What did we talk about going <laughs> in? I, I kept bringing it up. You ranked 28th in free throw shooting. Well, did that not catch up? Yeah. Because you took you you wound up with 28 shots, 28 free throws. And you missed 11. And and you missed 11. They only took 16 free throws and made 12 out of 16. So so they still were minus five in the free throw mm-hmm. category. But but you took so many. You took 16 more free throws than they took in their building. Right. That's shocking to me. Right. Where did that come from? Mm-hmm. And I'm surprised they didn't complain about that, except they won. Right. They won with their leader, with their their MVP candidate, Chris Paul, so hobbled in the second, not hobbled, but so restricted in the second half that, that he couldn't dribble or couldn't shoot. And that's why, Skip, that's why he, they were able to win, because Chris Paul is one of the few leaders, one of the few great players that scoring is not the only way he can impact the game. It's more so, Skip, he only averaged 16 points a game, but it's more so of his leadership. He's still a defensive prowess. He's still a bulldog. He's still tenacious on ball defending. Okay. And yeah, he's going to be handicapped shooting the ball. Uh, if now, so now I'm looking to rotate off him. Okay. So if I'm going to come double somebody, I'm going to double off Chris Paul. So in the fourth quarter, as you just pointed out, the Phoenix Suns at home managed to score 18 total points. Mm-hmm. If you do that times four, that would be 72, <laughs> 72. for the game. 72, <laughs> well, well, they managed to get to 99, right. which is still a very good defensive effort by you guys. Right. But you could score only 90. Correct. You're kidding. So they scored 18, and you managed only 22 points mm-hmm. in the fourth quarter. And in the fourth quarter, Chris Paul made that one shot out of the three that he took. The other two were complete, like, f- missed by 10 feet air balls. And yet, in the fourth quarter, Chris Paul had zero assists and zero rebounds and obviously zero turnovers because he just barely even touched the ball. Right. He, he wasn't even playing on the ball much. Devin Booker just took the whole game over. He said, I'll be the point guard and the shooting guard all in one. Skip, why not double him? Why not get the ball know. out of his hands I don't and know. make someone else beat you? 
I, that's what I didn't understand about Vogue. You still allowed him. They they kept you in the pick and roll. Just jet that. Okay, if you go, if if Aiden going to roll to the basket, make Bridges, make Jay Crowder, make someone else. Because I know what Devin Booker can do. Yeah. And even though Skip, this is his first time on the big stage. I've seen enough of him to know that what he's capable of doing. Now I want to see if Jay Crowder can make, take and make those big shots. I want to see if Bridges is going to take and make those big mm -hmm. shots. I'm going to put the ball in Cameron Johnson. Okay, if you make if you make six or nine threes. We're going to live with that. But I'm not going to let Devin Booker get going. I'm okay. not going to let him drive the basketball. That's not going to happen. Okay. He is really, really good. And that was a coming out party yeah. of, of sorts for him because we haven't seen him in a playoff game. And that was his first one. And he was playing at a level neither AD nor LeBron could play at. Right. Okay. So now let's get back to Anthony Davis. I have warned him in the past that you better be careful because when you play opposite LeBron James, the king, the goat sometimes needs a scapegoat. So who was trending all afternoon here in Los Angeles after the game? Right. A.D. as in a Disney. I saw that all afternoon. A Disney was trending because they, everybody was blaming and condemning Anthony Davis as you can only shoot it and play in, in the, the bubble, bubble right. right? A Disney. And I'm thinking, well, wait a second. A Disney just two weeks ago tonight against this same Phoenix team at Staples went 42 and 12. Yeah. 42 and 12? Exactly. Was that in the bubble? Maybe I missed it. Maybe no. they played that game on no. a neutral court in the bubble. Right. I think they played that at Staples. Right. 42 and 12, so I don't think we can write him off as a Disney. No, no, but Skip, the problem that they have is, Skip, I mean, 5 of 16, DeAndre Ayton, you destroyed DeAndre Ayton. And DeAndre Ayton looks like he took that personal. Says, I'm going to get you back. And he did. He more than held his own. And Skip, the problem that they have is that, and I get Skip, when AD is guarding a smaller guy, when he's guarding, say, Crowder, he's guarding somebody, it's going to be harder because those guys play on the perimeter. So it's not as easy for him to get rebounds if he's say, play, uh, playing someone that's close to the basket. I get that. But where he needs to punish those guys is on the offensive end. Jay Crowder, you three, four inches shorter than me. Bro, you can't guard me. He can guard you if you're out there 18 feet away from the basket. He can guard you and make you take tough shots. Get down on the block, drop mm -hmm. step, and go up strong. Okay, so this is what your man Vogues, as in Lakers coach Frank Vogel, said after the game. Phoenix brought a lot more attention to Anthony, obviously because of that game, right. 42 and 12, two right. weeks ago. They did a good job limiting his touches and then bringing double teams when he did get it and making things difficult for him. They did. He was the focal point of their defense. They were going to limit touches and limit shot opportunities if he did touch the right. basketball. So you, you have to understand that he was having a hard time getting where he needed to go to start with. He also said that because LeBron got off so hot and they as a team got off to a quick start. Right. That, that he drifted out of the offense. And sometimes when he drifts out, he can't drift back in. But that's the, here's the thing, though, Skip. LeBron got off to that hot, 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 hot start, but he stopped shooting. Thank you. Now we get to the crux <laughs> of the issue. I try not to be too hard on LeBron James on this show, although I'm sure people think I'm extremely overcritical. But to me... The bulk of the blame for yesterday is on LeBron's shoulders because the focal point of Phoenix's defense was AD. Right. So in the fourth quarter, I just sat there and I said, okay, this is it. The king is going to take this game over. And I waited and I waited and I waited through the fourth quarter in which LeBron went one of four from the field. He went 0 of three from three. He went one of four from the free throw line. One of four? With Cannot do it. Cannot. Well, that's what happens, Skip. That's why you almost got injured. If you make the free throws, Chris Chris Paul doesn't undercut you. Almost pull your, uh, your arm out of socket. If you make the... He missed three in a row. You throw at one for four, he missed three in a row. He missed one. He got fouled on the three. He made the first one and didn't miss. I'm like, come on, Brian. We got to get those, bro. Okay, so could we just quickly, just to refresh people's memories, because the blind witnesses out there want to sweep these things under carpet. Can we just see LeBron in the fourth quarter, please? First from the free throw line. Okay, these are his misses. Never up, never in. Got to get it up on the rim, LeBron. Then he, he goes completely overcompensates to the back mm -hmm. iron. 
And then this is the next one. This is the Chris Paul blockout, and he misses it badly yeah. long. Okay, he, he is simply, for stu- superstars, the worst fourth quarter late game free throw shooter I've ever seen. It's it's a real Achilles heel for him because it gets worse and worse. The demons grow in his head. Right. So for me, this is why we go back and forth. You say he's the GOAT, and I say he's disqualified from being the GOAT because he can't fix his late game clutch time free throw shooting. That's just horrible. That takes the heart out of a basketball team, especially on the road when they think we've got yeah. this. It was up to him to, to ju- not just to close the deal, to just slam home the deal in the fourth quarter. I seriously, I kept waiting. I kept waiting. I thought this is his game on a silver platter because Chris is so handicapped. Skip, I honestly thought he was going to go for 20 in the first quarter. Okay, well, it he looked makes- like it. And he- by the way. He scored eight in the first four and a half minutes of the game. Yes. He made two threes, and he made another. And they were pure. Shot. I mean, they were from flags They were down. pure. They were pure. And then I don't know what happened because I thought for the rest of the game, very weirdly, it, it was like weird LeBron disengaged. Right. I don't know. I kept waiting. Attack. Go into attack mode. I was, I was waiting for that also. But the thing I think AD is going to have to understand, Skip, and he's going to have to get better at this. And to really, and this is why Joke, Joke is going to win the MVP. Joker, uh, Nicole yeah. Jokic is going to win the MVP. Skip, if he doesn't score, he can turn into a playmaker. Now, give Portland credit. Portland said, you score all the points you want. We're not sending double teams. You're a uh, uh, Nurkic. You just got to wear this hat. Cantor, you just got to wear this hat. Because we're not coming because we're not going to let him kick to three-point shot. He had one assist. AD's going to have to understand, Skip, if I can't score, let me play mate. But guys are going to have to hit shots. Skip, well, look, we, we're, not a, we're not a good three-point shooting team. There's no other way around that. You we are 7 of 26. We, you, that's you, not, you need to be a little better than you that, need to be a even little, though you were 21st in right. three-point shooting. You need, we, uh, uh, KCP struggled. He had his first one and then didn't make another one nope. after that. So they struggle from the three-point line. And what happens when the double team comes and AD kicks it to somebody, you're going to have to make it because then if you start missing a bunch of them, he's going to like, well, hell, you missing. I might as well go ahead and try to force up a shot myself. Yep. I can't be no worse than what you. I trust me more than I trust you. So guys are going to have to make shots to give him confidence that he can still – that he, he can pass it to him, and they can make plays. LeBron, again, had too many turnovers. What do you have yesterday? Five. Skip five. That's not you, you, five of the 14. Like I said, he likes to feel out. LeBron, they didn't double you yesterday, bro. So they now, did not. Now you need to, okay, y'all, oh, y'all going to leave Bridges on me head up? Y'all going to let Drake Crowder on me head up? Okay, I'm going to go to work. Okay. So LeBron said after the game, I love it when AD takes the pressure on himself, which he did. He right. took it all on his mm-hmm. shoulders. LeBron went on to say anytime he comes to the pressure, like, like accepts yep. it, and tells you guys we can't win without him playing the way he played, he always responds. I will, I will buy yes. that. Yes. And LeBron's conclusion was when AD is AD again, we'll be the Lakers. So I'm thinking – is he the best player on the Lakers? That's what LeBron is basically saying is I need him to be the best player for us to be the best team. No, what I need him to do, Skip, the thing is that I don't need him to do is sit around and watch me. If you notice, Skip, they always try to get the ball to AD first. Let A- Go through AD first. LeBron said, I can't. Bro, I got 260 of these playoff things under my belt. Mm. 130 plus 30 point games. So I know what to do in moments like this. He needs AD. They cannot win. There's a reason why you mortgage your future for the present. You gave up a lot of draft pick. You gave up a lot of draft, a lot of capital to get Anthony Davis for the simple fact, Skip, he's a walking 25 and 10. And yesterday, Skip, 13 points? Skip, what the hell I'm going to do with 13 points and seven rebounds in 40 minutes? Mm. And they keep talking about Drum. Drum in 20 fewer minutes had a 10 and 7 ball game. Okay, so what's the answer? I mean, excuse me, 12 and 7. 12 and 7. But I keep telling you, Drum is the problem. The big penguin needs to be put on ice. The big penguin played zero minutes in the fourth quarter. And it didn't work. It didn't help. Okay. Okay. But I still say that AD is pushed more to the perimeter by Kareem Abdul Drummond, oh. as I call him. Like, once he, he's a lane clogger. He's a ball stopper in the lane and let a me, lane let clogger. Let me ask you a question. You just said it two weeks ago Sunday. Mm-hmm. That lane clogger, AD got 42, 12, 5, 3, and 3. The first Laker to ever have a stat line like that. Was Andre Drummond on the court? He was, but okay. yesterday, your, your man Anthony Davis went one of three in the paint. One of three? What I got to do with hell? Drummond wasn't guarding him. 
Hell, that ain't Drummond's fault that he missed his shots in the paint. Well, it looked like he just kept drifting and drifting farther and farther out. He was taking way too many mid-range jumpers, and sometimes he can be hot. If he comes out mad and, and, and takes over the initiative early, right. sometimes he can just destroy people. Skip, they got out-rebounded on the offensive end. That's the second time all well, year. They Aiden got eight by himself. That's, that's inexcusable, and some of that's on Drummond. But, but how many did Drummond have? Drummond have seven. So if, if Drummond's out of the ball, Skip, that's the thing. Look, Trez cannot bang with Drummond. You see what happened? I mean, with, with a, a DeAndre Ayton. Yep. You see what happened when, when Drum goes out? He starts eating on the glass. When they take Drum, look, look at what he, look what happened. Rebound after rebound after rebound after rebound. You got to have a body to box him out. I, look, I understand that Drummond, he can't do anything but rebound and put in shots around the basket. Okay. He doesn't give you any value from the mid-range or the three-point line. But you need somebody to bang that big body, and he's it. Okay, before we go, we need to take one last quick look at the box out by Chris Paul the third on LeBron James right. on that last on the free throw mix. Right. I want to know, Vogel called this a dangerous play. AD indicated it was a dirty play. He said it's not the kind of play we want in our league. Right. The okay? problem that they have, I think, when he grab he grabs his arm. Skip, you're supposed to get on the guy's leg to, you know, to, to box him out. I get that. But here's the thing. Make the free throws, we don't this is a moot point. Well, that's true. It, that's okay. So you 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 are blaming LeBron for that? Then. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not. I'm, yeah, you got to make the free throws. Make the free throws, and then Chris Paul. You don't have to worry about Chris Paul boxing. Yeah. I think the problem is is that when he grabs his arm, you grab his arm, pull one way, you put your body on his legs, and his legs are going out from under him the other way. That's where the problem could arise. So what got me was Chris is having problems with his shoulder, yet he's strong enough to pull down LeBron <laughs> and hurt LeBron's other shoulder. Yeah. How do you? And LeBron stayed down for a long time. I don't think he needed. I don't think he was hurt that bad. He's like, well, hey, I ain't gonna be the only one out here uh, with a bum shoulder. Okay, so he wanted to do tit for attack, right? Yeah. Okay, so in the end. I, I think it was a borderline dirty play yeah. in that he did it, – it, it's, it's an, a typical NBA playoff kind of a play. Right. But Chris Paul has a long reputation in this mm -hmm. league for going below the belt right. and crossing the line into dirty play. Well, bro, LeBron, see how Chris Paul played. Yep. I know they're best friends and all, but this – uh-oh, we'll be best friends again after this series. Yeah. But in the meantime, I see you trying to take my head off, or I'm going to bite yours off first. Okay, well, it's time for LeBron to start biting heads. Yeah, that's, that's right? what I'm saying. Yeah, we'll be free. We're going to be cool now. Hey, okay. bro, we're going to be cool after this, right? Good, okay. Okay, here we go. <laughs> take this boat with you. No mercy. Luka Doncic couldn't be slowed down over the weekend in Game 1 against the Clippers. The Mavericks star dropped to a 31-point triple-double in the 113-103 win. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George combined for 49 points, but were also only 3 of 14 from three-point range. Uh, Shannon, what's the biggest reason the Clippers lost this one? A baby bird. Oh. I've been trying to explain to you for the longest time, Skip, and eventually, eventually, you won't hear me, but you'll start to listen to me. Mm. They can't. I just somebody needs to explain to me, and I need you to explain it to me as if I'm a child. So break it down into the simplest of terms. How can a team that have the two best wing defenders since Jordan and Pippen and Kawhi and Paul George and Pat Bell and Serge Ibaka? So basically, they have what in defensive terms the '96 Bulls through '98 with Rodman, Harper, Pippen, and Jordan. And they can't stop that guy. He's in seven games against them, 31, 9, and 10. He has three triple doubles. And the, Kawhi didn't even, Kawhi's like, I ain't finna get in none of that. Paul George, you take him. Bam, bam. And he told, Jim, can we get that take? I, Jim, I, gotta, I just got to hear it. Because he told Pat Bell something. Russell Westbrook told y'all Pat Bell be running around out there screaming, saying, talking loud, saying nothing. Too small. This man too small. Mm. And y'all keep too small. That's what he told you. Mm. The only hope you got is the double teaming. And guess what he did? He passed out a double team to Tim Hardaway Jr. and Penny Smith that made nine threes. You got nobody on that team. And if you don't cheap shot him, if Marcus Morris Sr. don't step on his ankle, you got nothing. Because you can't do anything with him. Paul, I keep telling you. I keep telling you about Pell Playoff P. Mm. And they keep running and get it off my timeline. Mm. Eight years ago, uh, Paul George in the Birdman. He ain't did nothing like that since. When the last time he won a series in the playoffs? But why y'all worried about playoff P? Because he is exactly who I thought he was. Mm. Y'all need to start worrying about Kawhi and mm. them numbers that he keep putting up. He keep pulling. <laughs> or David Copperfield. Poof. 
Mm. Make himself disappear in thin air in the fourth quarter. Skip, how he looked at you in the fourth quarter? You loved him. Let me see what his numbers are in the fourth. Ooh, Skip, what I'm supposed to do with this with Kawhi? Mm. Three points, one assist. He's one of six from the three-point line. Had a three-pointer. I thought the objective was to try to put the ball in the rim on a three-point shot. He mm. ended up. Skip, you don't get credit if you just hit the net up under them, go through the rim. And Paul George was terrible for most of the game, Skip. Mm. Until y'all find a way to do something with Luka, mm. baby bird Doncic, mm. y'all ain't going nowhere. Okay, you finished? <laughs> My turn. <laughs> Let us look. You, you must have turned off your TV after nope. three quarters, I guess. Did you watch the fourth quarter? I watched a different fourth quarter than you saw. So, fans at home. He is talking about Baby Bird, who I call Baby Sparrow. I want the fans at home to realize in the fourth quarter, that's the quarter that counts, Yeah. with the game on the line, and it was a seesaw affair through the fourth quarter, back and forth and back and forth until the bitter end. Your man, Baby Sparrow, Luka Doncic, was 0 for 5 from the floor. He was 0 for 3 from 3. Mm -hmm. He missed one of his two free throws, and he had a grand total of... Three assists? Huh, one point. Three he assists? scored one point. He scored one point in the fourth quarter, and you're over there raving about what he did to the Clippers. It is lunacy. It is insanity. It is rewriting recent history. What are you talking about? He should. He nearly shot his team right out of the game in the fourth quarter. That's Baby Bird. Way to go. Baby Larry Bird. 31, 10, and 11. Uh, 31, 10, 11. He's That's about as close to Larry Bird as I am right now to French Lick, Indiana, <laughs> which is like 2,500 miles from here, where we sit in West Los Angeles. Okay, so that's point number one. Here's point number two, and this is the crucial point, and it involves you. What do I do now? <laughs> and all those conspiracy theorists out there who just a few days ago wrote off the Clippers for tanking their last two games because they didn't play their stars because they, quote-unquote, wanted the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, they got them. It was bogus. It was wrong. It, it, it put the Clippers in a terrible position because that team is really good. That team has been really hot of late, the how, Dallas Mavericks. How are they going to be really hot when they got a guy that can't shoot? Can't shoot threes and can't shoot free throws. By the way, he's yeah he's a career 33% free throw shoot, uh, three-point shooter. So what happened right out of the box? What happened? They came out with fire in their eyes because they should have. Because you <laughs> led the charge. You take to get the Mavericks. They did, they did. Bogus baloney. <laughs> and yet all they did was rest their stars and there was some rust going on with the Clippers and what have I always told you about Clippers and early afternoon starts they just have a phobia they have demons about early afternoon starts here in Los Angeles they are never ready so Kawhi comes out and says okay I'm, I'm going to destroy the demon for us and he scores 13 in the first quarter but they're down 33 to 30 after one because those guys are making every shot they shoot because they got fire in in their eyes. Good, good. And and it's hard because that's a good team with some tough guys on it. Hardaway can shoot the lights out. Finney Smith can yeah. shoot the lights out. And Jalen Brunson came off the bench in the fourth quarter and took the game over. Jalen Brunson took the game over. He was the guy who saved your bacon in the fourth quarter and saved Baby Bird's bacon. No, no, yep. because, well, he did. Look what he did in the fourth quarter. He was the, the he was really all they had. What did he score? Nine points in the fourth quarter. So that's that's number two. And then number three, my team led the league in three-point shooting. It led the league in free throw shooting. And you know what was about to happen. Nothing. They're choking their brains out because they know that they're supposed to shoot threes and make free throws. And they don't do either one. What? Yeah. And I'll be the first. I am. You were right about Kawhi Leonard. He was pathetic in the fourth quarter. He was great in the first quarter and kept them afloat. But when it was time, when Baby Bird was gagging his brains out, shooting, can, can we see some of the shots he took? I, can we see the, the, the two shots that he took? I don't know if we have them handy here, that, that nearly got the Clippers back in the game. Here, here's Luca, here's, here's Baby Bird. There's the first shot. Uh, did that hit anything? And then we he takes remember. another one from three, and did that? That definitely didn't hit anything. That's your guy. That's Larry Bird the yeah. second. Yeah. Larry Bird Jr. Really? 
Skippy really? already got. I, I think he shot two straight air balls. Skippy already on got one, one possession. Skippy already he shot got two 30. straight. He already got 30 points at that point. He so, said, you don't so, want to make y'all look too so bad. So Kawhi had 26, 10, and 5. He had a decent game until the fourth quarter when he was not very good. Now back to Pandemic P, who you just completely wrote off. In the fourth quarter, Pandemic P was actually playoff P because he scored 10 points. In the fourth quarter, he was really good. That's why you was down, because he was terrible for most of the ballgame. Mm. But Skip, what did I tell you on Friday? Before you go, I, I told you on Friday, I said, don't let him front run. I said, just keep the game close. If you keep the game close with the Clippers, they were number one. Skip Bayless come out here every day. We number one in three-point uh, 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 shooting in the regular season. We're number one in free throw shooting in the regular season. But come playoff time, if you keep the game close to the Clippers mm. and don't let them front run, mm. they'll fold like banquet chairs at the end of the night. Mm. The reception is over. They start folding up chairs. So with three minutes left, Paul George comes down, if we could see this, please, and <laughs> nails a 19-foot jumper that even took me aback. I thought, that is pure clutch. This is playoff P. That ties the game with three minutes to go. Then after that, Finney Smith comes right down and hits a three, and Marcus Morris comes down and has the worst game of his life. He misses two free throws. Mm -hmm. the, 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 he, he's a dead eye from three and free throws, and he had a horrible game. And then we just showed the two Luka misses, and that brought it back to, with two minutes left, Paul George comes down and takes a quick three because he said, well, if Kawhi's not going to do it, I guess i got to take it. Oh, you already this know is he the game. Do it. This is the game right here. That's up, and there's a hand in his face. He's short left. And they just ran off with the with the basketball game at that point, and I was devastated. And your guy, hold on, your guy was minus fifteen and plus minus. I want to know. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where's where's that guy to be doing all that talking? The one that says "come one, come all." The guy that defends everybody. Ain't nobody no problem. The guy can't play in the fourth quarter. I just want to know why Patrick Beverly, who everybody keeps telling me is the third most important Clipper on the roster, mm -hmm. can't get on the court in the fourth quarter. Okay, if you happen to watch the game as I did, what happened to the beginning was they did put the little pit bull Patrick Beverly, <laughs> who is six one on six seven, Luca. <laughs> And he didn't cook him. The picks cooked him because he kept getting picked and picked. And guess who wound up on Luca again and again? Big Zoo. All seven feet of Big Zoo. And he stepped back and made three threes, three straight threes in the first half. Remember, he's a horrible three-point shooter. I can't tell. He's 33%. And he had one little hot stretch at the end of the half that gave them a five-point lead at halftime that they somehow clung to the rest of the day. Because you know what? If you look at what happened... Three of the Dallas starters had 14 of 25 threes. That's Finney Smith, that's Hardaway, and that's Baby Bird. Baby Bird! Yeah, he made 5 of 11. He never will again the rest no, of his no, no, life. Yes, he, he will. one yes, of those nights. Yes, he will. Meanwhile, three of my starters, Kawhi and Marcus Morris and Paul George, combined to go 3 of 20 from 3. 14 of 25 for three, their three starters, 3 of 20 for mine. Yep. What do you think is going to happen? We're going to lose. Yes. And we wound up losing by, what was it, 10? 10. 10. And yeah, it was a tie ball game. And then yeah. they ran off all those four. Skip, this was Luca. And, and, and this was Luca. This was Luca reading this Clippers defense. Read them like the morning paper. Oh, y'all going to do that? I'm going to do this right here. <laughs> y'all going to do that? I'm going to do that right here. And read them. Read them. So Ty Lu suggested after the game there's going to be a defensive change for game two. And guess who that will be? And I hope I see it from the start. Kawhi Leonard will take Baby Bird. Eat him up. Baby Bird. One-on-one. -on -one. Here we go. They're worried that it will take too much out of Kawhi on offense. <laughs> but if he gives you only what he gave you in the fourth quarter anyway, he looked gassed anyway to me. You might as well gas out on defense. I've been telling y'all. But you didn't want to hear me. Mm -hmm. Kawhi Leonard has not been that defensive guy since he left San Antonio. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because the offensive tape. I don't care how great a defender is. He'll never get the praise and adulation as a guy that can score the basketball. Mm. That's fact. Okay, you got me for one game. <laughs> but I remind you, the Lakers lost their first playoff no, no, game. No, 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 don't do that. Don't you do, don't you dare put Clippers and Lakers in your mouth <laughs> in the same center. I just did. Don't you do that, Skip Bayless. And I'm about to do it in one more area in which I take all the blame. It was my fault that my Clippers lost on Saturday because of something that I did. If we could see this picture, please, oh, that I posted on Instagram. God, That's me after the yep. game. And you know what's in my lap? <laughs> What I chose to wear, because I came in from running right at the tip-off. It was, what, 1230 this time? Yeah. I came in from running, and I was all sweaty, and I thought, I'm, I'm late to the game. I thought, 
I'll just throw on the robe that Lil Wayne gave me for Christmas, a Versace robe. He yeah. gave it to me for Christmas. I haven't worn it because I'm not the big robe wearer. Yeah, yeah. And I threw it on and sat down to watch the game, and it didn't dawn on me until the end of the game. Lil Wayne is a Lakers fanatic. He's a, he's a big Lakers Oh, he Lakers jinxed fan. you. He jinxed me. I wore his <laughs> robe, a gold robe, just like purple. It should have some purple on it somewhere. I wore it for the whole freaking game. I jinxed the Clippers with that robe. And if you can see in that picture, not only am I forlorn, but my little daughter, Hazel, I don't know if you oh, can yeah. see her. You can't really see her on this. I noticed sort of that. Cut there, but she's, she's not she's, happy. She's photobombing me. I didn't even know she's in the picture. <laughs> yeah. She photo, photobombed me, and she's just as upset as there I am. She is. Hold on. So let me get this. Get baby bird out of the way. He's blocking <laughs> Hazel. Get baby bird off Hazel. <laughs> that's, that's blasphemy. Can I ask you a question, Skip? <laughs> So you said what happened with the Clippers, the reason why they lost is they yeah. played at 1230. Yeah. What time did the Lakers play yesterday? Is that mm. the reason they lost? Okay, but I didn't say they had a phobia about early starts. My guy got hurt. But you got with an early extra. start. Yeah. Didn't you have an extra? No, we had an extra out. Yeah, you had right. an extra one. Yeah. Don't do that, Skill okay. Bayless. Oh. Watch what happens at nighttime tomorrow night, because it's do or die for my Clippers tomorrow night, and Skip. they will do. Skip. Kawhi ain't been that dog mm. on the defensive okay. end since well, he left San Antonio. Why? I keep telling you. Get your popcorn ready. Luca go cook night. him. Okay, once Luca cook him, then where do you turn? Mm. Where do you turn to? Because he already you, told you. You got me. Because he, Luca cooked the Clippers in the fourth quarter for one point. He, I'm shaking in my boots. But he had 30. He already had 30 at that point. Yeah. He already had 30 at that point. Already had a trip dub waiting on the table. Okay. We got this. You, you don't. You, you about to catch another L. Yeah. Oh, well, if we do, then we're done. We might oh, you're well done not regardless. even go to Dallas. You're done regardless. Yeah. You're done regardless. Oh, is, are you on? You're done regardless. Okay, how many cases are we going to put on that? I want no cases. You want no want cases because no cases. you got no courage. You got no guts. You got no conviction. Oh, Baby Bird got yeah. something for you. He's helping. <laughs> he ain't hurt. Y'all can't step uh, on his ankle now. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, a couple things to point out. If you're getting rid of the Versace robe from Wayne, I will take that off really? your hands just in case. Yeah, it's a little I, sweaty I right now, that. but that's okay. I'll wash it. And how are you blaming Wayne for that? Come on, Skip. Wayne's a fan of the show. The He's not I'm not blaming him. Us. I credit him. Way He's to go. He's not going to be happy. Well, hey, maybe it worked. I don't know, bad. Shannon. Mm. Did you wear a robe as well? Because nope. we got to get back to Lakers Suns here. Chris Paul had to leave the game yesterday in the second quarter after suffering a shoulder injury. The Suns star point guard would end up returning and playing through the injury in the 99-90 to win over the Lakers. And when asked if he'd be ready for game two, Paul said absolutely. The Lakers were slight underdogs game one, but tomorrow night now find themselves as two-point favorites according to Fox Bet Sportsbook. So Shannon, do you expect Chris Paul to be a liability on offense? Skip, I, uh, Chris Paul is one of the few guys that I mentioned early in the, in, in, in the A segment is that he can impact the game with more than just scoring. And I think the thing is that's what he's going to have to do. He's still going to have to be able to play make. Now, how much he's going to be able to play make, Skip, with his right hand, he's a right-handed player, um, how much is he going to be able to? Because I'm going to make him use that right hand. I'm going to stay on that left. I'm going to make him put that ball in that right hand because it seems to me he doesn't have the grip strength. And he, the ball just kept slipping out, and he just, he just couldn't find it. So I'm going to see. I'm going to test it early. So I'm telling Caruso or whomever's guarding him, Schroeder, stay on his left and make him keep the ball in his right right hand. That's what we're going to do. And if the help comes, Skip, I'm helping off Chris Paul because I don't believe he can consistently make those shots that he would typically make because of that nerve that nerve impingement that could possibly be going on. Now, maybe it's some side. He has a day. I'm sure he'll ice it. He'll get stem, and he'll, he'll probably feel a little better. But I'm going to test it out. And guess what? I'm going to bang into him. I'm sending him picks. I'm sending picks. I'm going to put Chris Paul in. I'm keep putting Chris Paul butt in the pick and roll with Big Drum. Mm. That's what I am going to do and have him run into some of those picks. And I'm going to see when we play bumper cars, that net going side to side, yep. how it feels. But Chris Paul is too great of a player to, to not find other ways to help his team win. So offensively, Skip, he might not be able to give you the production point-wise. Yep. But his leadership in other aspects, he's still going to be on ball, still going to be able to defend, I believe, defend at a high level. <laughs> Chris Paul is still Chris Paul, and what the greats can do when they're limited in one era, area, they'll find another way to try to impact the ball game. So that's what I expect for Chris Paul. But what we do here, we don't make excuses. Mm. So I'm not going to let you do that. Mm. I'm not because I know you tried to build one in and say LeBron James get all the breaks, but we're not going to do that. That's not what we're going to do today. LeBron James gets all See? the breaks. <laughs>
Would you believe that going into game one of the finals last year, they draw the fifth seed, the Miami Heat, and Dragic is hurt, and he's their leading playoff scorer? And I'm like, he got hurt in the game. What a huge advantage that was. He wasn't hurt coming into I that series. He was. He no, was. he got hurt. He remember he, uh, no, he was. Well, Bam was the one who got hurt during the game, and then he was never right the rest of the series. So two starters, two key components, Dragic and Bam, are gone in game one. And how, how much, it's like, thank you, basketball gods. Here, LeBron, you get, what was he up to now? His third championship? Or maybe it was the fourth. I forget. Fourth. Okay, I'll give you four. But I, I One was flawed. One was, but you the, know the what? Ray Allen was, it has an asterisk. I never sorry. heard people say, when Kevin Love and Kyrie got hurt, Braun has all the bad luck. Mm. He gets all, he don't, they didn't say Braun get all the breaks then. They were applauding. That Kyrie and Kevin Love was out, and LeBron was under man against the Golden State Warriors. Now you're talking about, he oh, had, bam. He had them down two games to one, and there was no KD. They weren't the Warriors yet. Did they you see Steph the Curry? Dynasty. Was there Steph Curry? Was Steph Curry still there? They well, still he had was, but nobody knew he was Steph quite yet. Yeah, he was Steph. And Iguodala was the MVP of that final. But he was the MVP of the regular season, so I knew who he was. Okay. And Clay. They had Clay. Don't forget about Clay now. Your king had them down two games to one with game four in his house, and he shot seven of 22 and went right in the tank in that game. Oh, he had a, oh, he had a Kawhi game. Mm. Kawhi was nine of 22 yesterday. He had a Kawhi game. Okay. Thank you for putting Kawhi in the same <laughs> breath with LeBron James. Y'all been doing it for years. Yeah. You, Kenny okay. Smith, and a lot of y'all okay. been doing that for years. All right, so back to Chris Paul. The reason that he is not more decorated in the postseason is he has been regularly and repeatedly hurt. He's he just hurt. always he gets does. hurt. And, and when they went up in Houston, he and James, three to two, remember that? Yep. They go up three to two on those Warriors. Yep. And he pulled his hamstring. And they were not the same. Obviously, James fell apart and, and had turnover the game. It would have been game six and seven back at Golden State. Mm -hmm. And James was no good, and they were, would, would they shoot from three in the— Oh, they missed like 27 in the row or something like, like that, yeah. What, like 7 of 44 <laughs> yeah. from three in, yeah. in game seven at Golden State. But the point is, here we go again with Chris Paul. So it's difficult for me to read into exactly what he's going to be tomorrow night because I don't know. Right. It was a weird injury to start right. with. I think it was a stinger, as we talked about right. before, but— was it worse? Right. Was it some structural damage? They called it a contusion. That's what, what they call it. A contusion? What does that mean? A contusion of your <laughs> shoulder? Skip, I think the thing is, Chris doesn't know because me playing with an ankle sprain, I can tell you what a, a pretty good what I'm going to be like because I've had one before. And when I've had an injury and I get it again, I can tell you with a pretty degree of certainty, okay, I've had this injury before, before. It's not quite as bad. I don't know if Chris Paul has had this injury before. So he can't tell you with any degree of certainty how he's going to play because he's. Not, I don't think he's ever had to deal with it. Now, if he's had to, he's probably had to deal with a jammed finger. He's had to deal with an ankle or maybe a knee or something like that. And he can tell you with a Pretty degree of certainty. You know, I've had this before. I can deal with it. This is what I know what I can do. But something like this, something that he's never had, this is uh, this is foreign. This is unknown to him. But Chris Paul, like I said, I'm not going to sell Chris Paul short. That's one thing I'm not going to do. Okay. So, if I'm the Lakers, if I'm Frank Vogel, Jason Kidd, and staff, I just watch him warm up. And if he can't shoot a lick in the warm-ups, or if he's not even trying to shoot a lick in the warm-ups, right. then I know I got him right where I want him. That's why the odds makers have flipped the script from Lakers two and a half point underdogs in game one to Lakers two point favorites Faves. in game two. That's a four and a half point swing we got because it. of this injury, right? Well, whatever the reason why, we're going to win it. Like I said, but okay. I tell you what, watch Drum set them picks on it. Okay, well, this is a mismatch in game two because if he's as limited as he was in game one, then you know and I know what's going to happen. They, they won't just help off Chris Paul. They will dare Chris Paul to shoot in ways they did not yesterday. Exactly. They actually guarded him yesterday when that defender should have been on Devin Booker right. for the whole fourth quarter. Yes, yes. They should have been all over yes. just the way they played Steph the other night right. and say, you can't have right. a shot. You, yeah. you know, when you step across half court, we are going to force you to you give, give it the up. ball up. Give it up. And if you have to give the ball up to Chris Paul who can't shoot, so, so be, be it. it. Right? I, I, I totally agree with you, Skip. And that's what I couldn't understand. Because Devin Booker was waiting. He knew the double team might be coming. He was getting the ball. He going straight to the basket. He either getting to the rim or he's pulling up from 8 to 10. And I'm like, Frank, 
Now, you're a defensive guru now. I mean, you've had top top defenses when you were in Indy. You had top defenses here with the Lakers. Uh, but, bro, you're not going to get the ball out of his hands. You see, he's the only one making shots, Kim. Mm. So the other fortuitous break that you got yesterday was in that fracas, that melee, that, that Cameron Payne got ejected, and I he don't know it. how. Well, for what? Because he, he threw, threw the, the ball? Yeah, he, first of all, Skip, he shoved it. Then he threw the ball. Did he not shove it? Well, then Montrez came running in and, and blasted, yeah, yeah, basically, he, 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 right? Yeah. And I don't know how Montrez didn't get he gotta take, he, we, we tried to We tried to separate it. We didn't want no we didn't want no problem. We didn't want no trouble. Okay, so the point is, well, look, Caruso started it. Well, Skip, you know, Skip, you get that a lot. The guy's holding the ball. He tried to explain to the referee, and the guy slapped it. Now, I didn't like that either because that's the way you can get a finger. Guy slapped the ball down and ended up messing up well, a finger. Well, once upon a time, Russ got his knee wrecked that way by <laughs> little Patrick Barrow. Exactly. So I, I get the... the uh, uh, pain being upset because you can't you can hurt somebody's hand like that slapping the ball out of okay. the hand so he was lost and that's your backup point right. guard so really monty williams had no choice down the stretch he had to play career well, they still had carter they had i think eton yeah. moore yeah. eton moore hit the shot the other day that won in the ball game yeah, so they got guys that's more obviously they're not chris paul i don't think he trusted anybody he would have trusted cameron Payne. right that, oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 so tomorrow night, I'm suggesting that Chris plays only maybe 25 minutes instead of 36, and that Cameron Payne's minutes go from, he got almost 13, go up to 20-ish. So that's what I think you're going to see. That's why it will be a mismatch. That's why it should be a cakewalk for the king and We're his not, I'm not, Skip, I don't listen to you because all you cakewalk. try to do, you try to just set it up. Try no. to set, I know what you try to do. No, cakewalk. To, because if it doesn't happen, see, this is what I've been talking about. Your man, La Ankle. Okay, La Ankle James. We, we haven't even talked about his ankle because he looked fine to me he yesterday. Ain't fine. No? He, he's not fine. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's playing on one leg. No. Yeah. You know he's so not So he's fine. not clutch. He's crutch, right? See? He's crutch James. But we didn't get a chance, get a chance mm. to rest. Somebody mm. else had no injuries, and y'all was resting for the last 10 games. Mm. And how y'all look? Rusty is how we looked. You could not be rusty because you had to play your way in. We this. had to play our way nothing. Yeah. We were cruising. Yeah, cruising. So <laughs> the point is, you got an easy one tomorrow night, and then we'll see you, Chris Paul. How you think we got easy? That's the number two seed. Who's their most valuable player? It's Chris Paul, right? He might be their most valuable. He's not their best player. Okay, That's Book. Well, that is true. So you can take Book out of the game because it's going to be five on four. Yeah, we're going to double him. Okay. We're going to get the ball. Congratulations. Out it's one to one. And Big Drum going to give us 15 15. Yep. 15 and 15. 15 and 15. What part about 15 and 15? And that means understand? AD's going to be out on the perimeter saying, can I play? AD going to give us 25 and 11. Because mm. that's what he gave us in the bubble against Jay Crowder. Mm. That's still Jay Crowder. He's just not in Miami anymore. You notice, what I was noticing, everybody else noticed this too. Dre Crowder can hit shots with everybody else. Last year he couldn't miss in Miami. Mm. He can't miss with the sun. He played with LeBron in Cleveland and couldn't throw it in Lake, Mich Lake mm. Erie. Mm. Did you notice that? I did not know. Yeah, that. I noticed it. Yeah. And everybody else noticed it too. I said, Do y'all remember when he played with LeBron in Cleveland and he made all those threes? Mm. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> well, he needs to make them tomorrow night. Well, that's okay. AD going to make something. AD, AD going to make him pay. Is, well, AD he said he's going to come out with a vengeance, so we'll see. 25 and 10, book it. You want some of that? He took book responsibility. Oh. 25 and 10 for AD, book it. No, I'm not betting against that. He should have 35 and 10. Trip done for no Go. mercy. According to reports, LeBron violated the league's health and safety protocols by attending an outdoor event for his tequila brand last week. The NBA was aware of the event and will reportedly not be suspending LeBron or making him quarantine because the event wasn't a threat to spread COVID. The Lakers have not reached the 85% vaccine threshold yet, but Frank Vogel said they should reach it by today. So, Shannon, what do you make of this? Nothing, because everybody that showed up had to bring this. I happen to be there. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad point. Mm. That's a bad point. So we was all good. That's your vaccination card. That's your is. Okay. <laughs> so we had a good old time, Skip. Mm. You know, got that. I got your bottle coming. Mm. Got you one too, Jenny. Woo. Yeah, you know that's how we do it, Skip Bayless. <laughs> <laughs> you a hater. I don't drink tequila, but I'll I'll take it gladly yeah. and give it to somebody. No, else. you got to you got to you got to okay. display Just it. feature it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Skip look. All right. I understand this was the event. Uh, obviously, they had planned this for some time, and then we're coming out of COVID, and uh, the CDC uh, are relaxing guidelines, even state levels. California, we're starting to open up more and more as we speak, and it seems to me the NBA is still stricter than the CDC and state and local levels. That is true. Uh, as, as far as, as the protocols. 
Um, I hate that LeBron, you know, really he put he put he kind of put the the NBA in a bind um, because they kind of would have been well within their their rights if they say, you know what, LeBron, you got to sit this one down. But you and I both know they're not sitting LeBron James down in a, <laughs> I don't think so. in, 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 the, in the playoffs. Even yeah. though they said he was found to be in, in breach, breach right, of the COVID right. protocol. Because they said everybody that showed up needed to have proof of vaccination or they have to have a net proof of negative test. Mm -hmm. So and, and, and I guess because it was it was somewhat of a scaled event and they could control it. They was like, okay, we feel that there's this is not a spreader mm -hmm. event. We feel very comfortable moving forward. I'm sure Adam Silver probably called LeBron and said, bro, you put us in a tough spot. We're not going to suspend you, not going to suspend you. Or but, quarantine you. Or quarantine yeah. you, mm -hmm. but please, uh, moving forward. But, Skip, look, I, I, I don't want to really make a whole a big deal about this. Um, I believe the, the, the event was, was, was safe, as safe as it could be. The CDC has already said that if you've been vaccinated, it's okay for you to gather. And this was not a this was not a large event, Skip. It wasn't a thousand people. It was a few, you know, close family and friends <laughs> that had got together. You know, had a little taste, a little, little two, three fans right. of That's fine. That's I got it. it. That's it. And I think the NBA ultimately deemed this a lesser violation right. because it was outside. Side. Correct. Okay? Right. And by the way, just watching sports yesterday, watching inside and outside sports, PGA and NBA playoff games, it looked like the pandemic's a thing of the past, yes. right? We look back in two years like, what pandemic? Right. <laughs> well, actually, this fall, because the football stadium is going to be jam-packed. Wow. So we'll look back and skip like, well, huh? Because I, I'm watching you. I watched a little bit of PGA. Congratulations, Phil. Mm -hmm. I'm like. That was an unmasked madhouse out there, <laughs> right? But the South has been unmasked for the longest of time, Skip. I don't know if you've been back down there in a while. But. I have not. I have not left the confines of my home, thanks yeah. to my wife. Yeah, but, but maybe yeah. you should start getting out. Yeah. Tell Ernestine it's okay. Both of you guys are vaccinated. You can get out now, Skip. She, she actually, on Saturday evening, allowed me to eat takeout food. It's the first time in a year. What's, what have we been, a year and yeah, two oh, months? Yes. First time I've eaten any restaurant food was Saturday night. That's how strict we've been. But that's okay. I love her for it. Skip, it's we got okay. this far. You, you, you vaccinated. Now. Okay, I'm vaccinated. Okay, now back to vaccination with LeBron. It has been puzzling to me. It, it has surprised me that apparently he has not been vaccinated. And again, it is his right as an American citizen to do whichever choice he chooses. Right. You know, whichever way he wants to go, mm -hmm. I got no problem with it. I was only surprised because he's the face of the league. Right. And he's definitely the face of a franchise in the Lakers who had a team initiative offering incentives to fans of free tickets if they got vaccinated. Yeah. And his league has had all sorts of public service announcements mm -hmm. featuring Kareem and Bill Russell mm -hmm. and Greg Popovich. Yeah. Please get vaccinated. Right. WNBA, one PSA after another. Please get vaccinated. But LeBron has declined to say whether he has or hasn't. So I don't know for a fact. Right. But Dennis Schroeder said there are two of us who are not vaccinated. And he says publicly, I will not get vaccinated. Right. He said he's not getting vaccinated. Mm -hmm. But uh, he said, well, the other day he said he's the only one now that's yeah. not vaccinated. I think the thing is, like, LeBron, LeBron, like, like, nah, look, y'all get a certain, y'all already know too much about me. Damn it, I'm not telling you if I am or not. I, I'm going to do... I'm going to do what's in the best interest of my family. And for me, I believe in the best interest of his family would probably get vaccinated. Probably Savannah is. And I think Bronny is probably the only one that's of age, the young kids that's, that can get vaccinated. Yep. But for me, I don't have a, I don't have a problem with it. I just hate that. I, 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 Skip, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm, a rule, I'm a rule follower. If they say don't do this, that, that's me. I, I ain't trying to break no rules and go all out of scope and, and, and things of that nature. And I get it. Like I said, I believe LeBron and them had had this event planned for an extremely long period of time. And once they relaxed the regulations, be it CDC, state and local level, and, it's, and, and the event said, basically, you got a card, you show negative tests, you'll be allowed to come in. And so, like you said, it was outside. It was, it was closely monitored. So I feel comfortable, but they weren't suspended. Look, Skip, they could have had this in a tent. They could have had 700 people mm -hmm. in a tent. Mm -hmm. They're not suspending LeBron James for the playoffs. They're not. I agree. <laughs> I laughed at that. But now Frank Vogel said yesterday after the game, we will surpass the threshold of 85%. I think it's 15 out of 17. Right. By today, he right. said. By today? Really? Right. By today. Well, then I had to leap to a conclusion. Might be wrong. Right. But, but I'm, I'm educated guessing 
that LeBron's getting vaccinated or has gotten we vaccinated? We got it. Huh? We just ain't telling y'all. Well, maybe. Y'all maybe. know too much as it is. Okay. Well, the problem is with the the protocol still in place, as you just said in mm-hmm. the NBA. Mm-hmm. The team protocols are such that when you go on the road, as they did on what Saturday night, yes, I guess, to, to Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Well, you're restricted you as a hold- team because you haven't reached the threshold right. yet. So your rules are way more severe yes. than other teams yes. who have reached the threshold. Right. You can't have team dinners. I, you're, you're not supposed to have dinners on the flight. So right. I don't know if they restrict it. I don't know how you even police that. Oh, so that's what they're doing now. So that's why we can't have no dinners. Well, that's if if you're not over the threshold, you can't have a team flight dinner. So what they do about them the, them high tickets they be charging? Can I get something for my money? Get, well, instead I don't of them know. box lunches, Scott, Scott, hold on. Why can't a team? Skip, that's a chartered event. Well, it's hard for me to believe that the pilots and the flight attendants on a chartered event hadn't been vaccinated. I would think that was the first that was the first thing that you had to get done oh, sure. in order for you to go back to work. Okay. So you mean to tell me? Come on, really? Well, it, so that that's only a, what a. 45 minutes. 45 five, minutes. Yeah. And guess what, Skip? You in a confined area. So mm-hmm. you so you can be in the confined area, but if we serve you food, that might be what give you end up giving okay, you COVID. Well, obviously, the last thing this league wants or needs right now is an outbreak on one of the playoff teams. Skip, ain't nobody there but them. Okay, I got it. But when they get to the hotel, they're much more restricted yeah, at the hotel yeah, 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 than you know a team the, yeah. that has been fully vaccinated. Right, right. right. right? Oh, Skip, I get, I get the hotel. Uh, coming in contact with the work, you don't know if the, the workers or the front, the staff at the front desk. You don't know who. If, skip. Normally, they just have the tickets laying out, or they have somebody to pass out your tickets. I mean, skip not your mm-hmm. ticket, your yeah, room, room key. Keys, sure. which, once you get there, somebody's handed your room yeah. key because they had to. Because you know, I would take people's room key and do something bad to their room oh, before okay. they got there. But that's neither here nor there. Okay. But anyway, so let's not. I don't want to make too big, too much of a deal out of this. LeBron is fine. Okay, I, I got it. But you follow politics a lot more closely I do. than I do. Yes. And, and yet I thought LeBron would be aligned with the group of people who would get vaccinated, who would push to get vaccinated. Skip. I don't know. Skip. LeBron, if you look at the vote, LeBron didn't tell you who he voted for. If he was registered to vote, he said he wanted you. LeBron wants to have a level of privacy, Skip, because when you're an athlete or you're a celebrity or you're a, pers- a prominent per- a public figure, yeah. people think they have access to everything. They should know everything. What type of gas you put in your car and what you eat for breakfast and all that. And LeBron says, you know what? I want a certain level of privacy. How many followers does he have on? 85 million. 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 85 Abandon social media. That would be privacy. No, 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 no. We ain't mm. doing that. Mm. We're not going to do that. Because, Skip, look, there are certain certain groups of people that no matter what LeBron says or anybody else says, they're not going to get vaccinated. Whatever the case may be, whatever, whatever. the reason. I'm scared of needles. That but, is true. Yeah. I, but they, they go get all this other stuff done and they do all this other stuff that's worse than probably the vaccine, but they ain't got no problem with that. I agree. I've covered several <laughs> prominent athletes I will not mention who had a deathly fear of needles. Yeah. They just would not be injected. Oh, yeah, I think I got a death. I think I, I fear dying more than I fear needles. Really? I don't know about all the rest mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. Okay. Especially if it's something I can prevent. Skip, I mean, it's preventable. No, I, I got it. I mean, I can, it's just like Skip. You got you got measles. You got to get chicken pox. You had to get vaccinated. Okay, you had to get well, boosters. That's why I, I thought LeBron would be a leader in let's get he vaccinated. Is. Well, is he? Let's go get vaccinated. We gonna put that. We gonna put that PSA out today. Okay. Well, maybe because Vogel says I. I guess he probably did get vaccinated. Remember, it takes what two weeks to kick in. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because you had to get one, and then three weeks later yeah. you go get the other. Right. Right. Yeah. So I, you know, I was well, in the front of the line. Maybe he went with the Johnson Johnson. He got the one. Man, I get the, no, 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 I no, no. He got the Pfizer. Okay. Yeah, that's what we do. Okay. Pfizer. Okay. Well, good. That takes two. <laughs> right. Yeah. No mercy. Well, the Lakers came up short yesterday in the first game of their series against the Suns. LeBron's 18 points was the most of any Laker in the nine-point loss. Anthony Davis didn't help much more, scoring only 13 points. And after the game, Davis said he took, quote, full responsibility for the loss, adding, there is no way we are winning a game, let alone a series with the way I played. Fox Sports NBA analyst Chris Broussard is now joining us. Uh, Chris, who deserves more blame for the loss? AD or LeBron, in your opinion? Well, Jen, I'm going to get my popcorn out because I I can't wait to see what kind of logic Skip comes up with to say it was LeBron. All right, because I I know that's the only reason this can be a question (laughs) because obviously it's AD. I mean, this isn't even a a, a question. Uh, LeBron wasn't good. Look, he was passive. He settled for the three too much. 
He had too many turnovers. So he, he didn't play a great game by any stretch. But the, LeBron has a history of this. It's called the feel-out game. All right, he did it last year against Portland in game one. Lakers lost. LeBron took his time, and everybody, oh, the Blazers are going to sweep the Lakers. <laughs> he did it the next round against Houston. Oh, the Rockets are going to sweep the Lakers. He's done it. You could go back even against Boston in 2018 in game one of the conference final. So LeBron does this, feels out the defense, how are you going to play me, and then determines how he's going to attack the rest of the series. He has a history of this, and it usually works out. AD, on the other hand, was abysmal. I can't overstate how bad AD was. He knows it. He stated it after the game, and he was correct. But it wasn't just that he had 13 points on 5 of 16 shooting. It wasn't just that he failed to grab even one offensive rebound. It wasn't just that his plus-minus was negative 18, which was twice as bad as anybody else that played in the game. It was that he gave the young, talented DeAndre Ayton confidence. This was Ayton's first playoff game ever. AD should have slapped him up, smacked him around, sent him a message that this is a different level, son. This is the postseason, and you're not ready for this yet. You will be in the future, but right now, I'm going to show you what this is about. For the next four, five, six games, you are going to go to school, and I'm going to be your teacher. Instead, he let DeAndre Ayton dominate him. 10 of 11 shooting, 21 points, 16 rebounds, 8 offensive rebounds. That's more than the total rebounds that AD had. And now he's got to deal with a very confident DeAndre Ayton for the rest of the series. So AD is to blame. He accepted the blame. He was right. I don't expect him to come out. And I don't think he can consistently be great this year for whatever the reason. I'm not saying rest of his career. He just doesn't have it this year. I think you'll have some great games. I think you'll have some solid games. And I think you'll have another bad game in this series. Not as bad as yesterday, though. So AD was to blame for this, but the Lakers are fine. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I gave LeBron some blame, too, because I thought LeBron, I thought he, because the way he came out, Chris, if you look, made his first three shot, two long threes, I was like, you know what, LeBron might go for 20 in the first half. He see the other guys were struggling. I mean, they were, they were getting up and down the court, had a nice lead, and for whatever reason, he's just like, okay, let's, let's try to get everybody else involved, and he kind of went away from scoring. And I just like to see, once I get it going, once I see LeBron get it going, sometimes I wish he would just keep it going. But like you said, this is a feel like game. If you go back over his history that he normally loses more times in the first game than he does uh, uh that he wins but somehow he always finds a way to win the series he sees how like you said see how they're playing okay y'all gonna double team me y'all not gonna double team me y'all rotating this way and he'll figure it out but ad ad cannot have one more point than Andre Drummond, who played 20 less minutes. He can't have two fewer rebounds than Andre Drummond that played 20 less minutes. And Andre Drummond and, and, and AD can't have more one more rebound than DeAndre Ayton had the entire game. DeAndre Ayton, our offensive rebounded, both of those guys combined. And Booker had more points than LeBron and AD combined. He took three field shots than they did combined, which tells me neither guy was aggressive enough. Therein lies the problem. AD, AD has struggled with consistency all this year. This is not just an isolated incident. If you go back and look at from the start of the season until AD got hurt, AD would play one good game. He would have a cup, three or four bad games. We'd like, well, damn, AD, you realize what you did last year? You were first team all NBA. You dominated the bubble. And the problem that a lot of the problem that I have with AD, Chris, is that AD, yes, you can shoot the three. You have that range. You have range from outside. But why are you taking Jay Crowder out there? He averaged 25 and 11 on 57% shooting against Jay Crowder last year in the bubble. Took him down to the block. He punished him. If you want to take eight and outside, put the ball on the floor and try to get to the rim, draw fives, I get that. But do not be shooting the ball over the top of Jay Crowder head from three or from 18, 20 feet out. Get your butt down on the block, either side, left or right. Get it in the high post and go do damage down there. We're going to be just fine. This is not overreaction Monday by O'Shea. I see mm. y'all. Hey, 
I see y'all Wednesday morning. Mm. Yeah. I see you Wednesday morning. Yeah, because <laughs> it, it's all about you. you. There's no Chris Paul. There, there you go. You okay. always. Okay, my, my turn. I got to get back to my friend Chris Broussard here. You guys amaze me with your apologies and your protection of LeBron James. I, and I try not to be, you, you did. You took yes. a lot of the blame in our opening segment. Yes. You, you didn't swallow it whole there. You, you suddenly said, oh, I can see where it's sort of 50-50 blame. No, no, but I, I okay. put it on both of them. I tweeted that yesterday. Because this this loss of that defeat of LeBron and AD. Okay, but you, you heard Chris talk and you thought, ooh, that sounds pretty no, good. No, 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 no. I, I don't let him. Okay, as I always <laughs> say. I, look, he wasn't good. Okay. But was he worse than okay. AD? That's uh, the yes. thing. Yes, he was. <laughs> the GOAT, quote unquote, always needs a scapegoat. And the billions of blind witnesses out there will pounce on AD or somebody. It's it's KC3 or it's, it's somebody every game. It's his fault. It's his fault. No, it's his fault. And it's never the quote unquote king's fault. So remember the context. With nine minutes and 24 seconds left in the first half, Chris Paul is wounded. I don't know what it was, but he was injured. <laughs> he became a one-armed man from there on, and it was his wrong arm that he could play with. It's only his left arm. So that's for the rest of the game. Then furthermore, Cameron Payne in the fourth quarter gets ejected, wrongly ejected. It was so wrong. they don't even have a backup point anymore. You can bring me any Carter <laughs> or any of those. E Javon they, Carter, they're e not going to play. They're not going to play in a game of this magnitude when you have the lead over the defending champs in game one at home. The game in the fourth quarter was begging for LeBron James to take it over. And I told Shannon, I just sat in awe because I kept thinking, King, it's your, it's your time and it's your turn. I don't care if it's game one or game 100. It's just begging for LeBron James to take it over. And you agreed with me about that yeah. in the opening segment of this show. Yeah. Because I kept waiting and I kept watching and I kept seeing LeBron go one of four from the field in the fourth quarter, 0 oh of three from three, and one of four from the free throw line. He is simply the worst late game clutch time free throw shooter as a superstar we've seen in the history of this league. It's his Achilles heel, and it disqualifies him from being even remotely close to Michael Jordan as the greatest player ever. So we saw it all in its, its ugly glory, all on display yesterday. He managed three total points in the fourth quarter while they held Phoenix to a grand total of 18 points in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. That's 18 times four. That would be 72 for the game. And you still couldn't win it? No, you couldn't because because your best player, the best player Wait, on the planet, Earth. no, your best player on the planet, you tell me, is LeBron James. You don't tell me it's Anthony Davis. No, but okay. I'm... And and again, Vogel said after the game that he he respected the fact that Phoenix knew what it had to do. It was going to limit Anthony Davis's touches, and when he did touch the ball, they ran a second defender at him. Sure. So the the whole defensive game plan was pointed, targeted towards stop Anthony Davis because just two weeks ago tonight at Staples, he had gone 42 Cooked and 12. Yep. 42 and 12. So LeBron's not even getting doubled. They're just playing LeBron with whomever yeah. picks him up. Well, you'll see. You'll and see. you know what? He was weirdly, oddly just disengaged after the first four minutes of the game when he scored an, a quick eight points. Where was he the rest of the game? They should have won that game going away. So you like Mikael Bridges, huh? You like Jay Crowder? Do I you like him? You know what I'm saying? Because you, you, you asking for it. Now, you just talked to, talk to men up on a 30-10-10 and 10 game. That's okay. what you talked them All into. Right, that's fine. You hear him, Chris? He over there talking about, oh, they didn't even double LeBron James. Well, they did Jay Crowder and, and Mikael Britt. Okay. I don't know who was taking it. They're going to get exactly what they're looking for. Okay, good. And that's why the odds yeah. makers said you were a two-and-a-half-point underdog in game one, and all of a sudden you're a two-point favorite because Chris Paul is handicapped. They don't expect, expect him to be able to shoot a lick. You, you will not honor his shot in game two, and you will double off him on Devin Booker, yep. as you should have in the fourth quarter yes, yesterday. Yes, we should have. That's who beat you in the fourth yes. quarter. Yes. Only Devin Booker. Yes. Skip, everything you said was right. You, you could just see it. LeBron was passive. Like I said, he yes. settled too much for the three. But you are giving – how you give AD a total pass? 
AD was a guy people thought this year might win the MVP. AD was a guy people said was the first or I think second, second best player in the league, according, I think it was to ESPN, going into the preseason. How can he go out there and have 13 points and no offensive rebounds? Again, LeBron wasn't good, but LeBron has, have, he's done this before. Okay, but you, AD you're giving, wait a second. A history of feeling people out. You're giving LeBron a pass because you're saying, yeah, he was bad, but he's done this before. Was he bad yesterday? Yeah, he was worse than AD when it yes. counted in the fourth How? quarter. When it was time, it was his game to win because they're doubling AD. So the game plan is dictating LeBron, go. And LeBron did not go. But, Skip. A you said AD's got to stop. Huff you, you hit it on the head, Shannon. Look, it's nice that AD can hit the occasional three. It's nice that he's got some perimeter skills. But he's not Kevin Durant. No. He's not Dirk Nowitzki. He shouldn't be out there primarily. He needs to get inside. And what the Lakers are going to have to do is Andre Drummond, uh, not that AD was good without Drummond yesterday, but he plays better without Drummond. Thank you. And so they're gonna, there is no reason for AD not to be play center in today's NBA. I'm tired of this, I'm a power forward. I don't want to play center. I don't want to bang. Who's banging today in the NBA? You're not banging with anybody on the block for 40 minutes anymore. He can play center in today's NBA. That's the best a lineup for the Lakers and LeBron's got to run the point and control the tempo. That's what the Lakers need to do. Well, I just, I just think the thing is with, with AD is that when I play, look, Skip, look, I was a smaller guy. So if I'm going to get a, small, a guy my size, I'm going to use my power. A big guy, I'm going to use my speed. AD going up against a smaller guy and he treating him like a big guy. He like he trying to shoot over my side. Get down on that block and punish Jay Crowder. They are a better team when he plays whatever you want to call it, center or power forward, they're better when they play small because AD is a better defender than Drummond is because they're the same height, but AD's a lot longer no. than Drummond is. But uh, let me ask you a question, Chris. When AD said when AD had his best game, he had a 42, 12, 5, 3, and 3. And no other Laker in NBA history. And you know Laker goes back to Mike and, and Will and Kareem and Shaq and Powell and Dwight Howard and now AD. None of them had a stat line like this. Was Drummond on the court or off the court when he put up these numbers? When he had that 38 and 12, 38 and 13 game in Portland, was Drummond on the court or off the court? See, I'm tired of people blaming Drummond when AD lays an egg, but when he plays good, or AD, AD, no, 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 don't do Drummond like that. Don't do it. I'm not saying Andre Drummond is Shaq, but he doesn't need to be. They got crushed. They are one of the few teams that play traditional. A true center that doesn't shoot threes, a, a four in AD that's a stretch four, and LeBron is really the three that plays the point. So they are a big team. And to get crushed by Phoenix, who only has one big in DeAndre Ayton, and then you got crushed on the offensive end, that's unacceptable. So if you don't got Drummond in there, how many rebounds you think AD going to get? But it's because, uh, uh, Shannon, even when they're big lineup-wise, they don't necessarily play big. Th that's the problem. They, they still play a lot of finesse ball. That's the and that's the problem, Chris. That's the problem. There are big teams that sh try to shoot threes like they're a small team, right. and that's not what they are. That is that's the problem. You got drum, you got AD, and you got you driving kick for what? Right, I agree. Okay, I agree. one final point from me. Do you realize the Lakers, as the visiting team at Phoenix, shot 19 free throws yesterday before the home team Phoenix shot one free throw, and the Lakers still lost by nine? That's almost incomprehensible yeah. to me. They, they, see, I, they shot 19 before they shot one, and they missed 17 of them, it seemed mm -hmm. like. There but that's go. okay. I, we, we'll have a, we're going to have a very similar conversation, mm -hmm. but a lot different tone come Wednesday. No, now, you remember not. how you're talking. Lakers remember by how you're 20. talking. Lakers by 20. No, it's going to be a cakewalk. Cakewalk mismatch. Watch. Watch. Cakewalk. No, no, I already know what you're trying to do. I'm not He's trying to do anything. He's trying to put a bad mouth on him. By 20, by 20, so he can come in here and jump on Goat James. But it ain't going to happen. No mercy. Well, Sunday, the best NASCAR season ever continues as the Cup Series returns to Charlotte, North Carolina for the Coca-Cola 600. Coverage begins with race day on FS1 at 4.30 Eastern, then continues at 5.30 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app.
Well, Luka Doncic couldn't be slowed down over the weekend in Game 1. Against the Clippers, the Mavericks star dropped a 31-point triple-double in the 113-103 win. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George combined for 49 points, but were also only 3 of 14 from three-point range. So, Chris Broussard, he's still with us right now. Chris, uh, what's the biggest reason the Clippers lost this one? The biggest reason they lost was because playoff Rondo couldn't save them from the problem that's plagued them all year. And really back to the bubble playoffs. And I'm not jumping on Rondo because he played fine. In fact, he hit the three midway through the fourth quarter and then made a free throw to put him up 98-95 with 6.08 left in the game. From that point on, the Clippers were outscored 18-5. to And as I said... This is the problem that's plagued them dating back to the bubble. They can't close. It baffles me because Kawhi, with his mid-range game, should be a great closer. (laughs) But they can't close. And and they went 2 of 12 in the last six minutes from the field, 0 of 7 from 3. This was the best three-point shooting team in the league. (gasps) 1 of 4 from the foul line. What? And you're missing free throws like that. That shows... They just fell apart, and that is the biggest reason that they lost defensively. Look, they Luka, they held him to one point in the fourth quarter. They've got the two best wing defenders, you know, as a tandem in the league in Kawhi and Paul George, and they couldn't stop Jalen Brunson and crew. And so the Clippers have a problem, and look, of the top six teams in each conference that made the playoffs, the top six seeds, The Clippers had the worst net rating in clutch time, the final few minutes of the game. And that continued yesterday. And if they don't fix it, they just degenerate into one-on-one play. And if they don't fix it, they may not get to the second round. I've been trying to tell Skip, Mm. there's a difference. They're the number one three-point shooting team win, Chris, in the regular season. They're the number one free-throw shooting team win, Chris, in the regular season. And as and that, that anaconda, as you get to the playoffs, Skip, that pressure, the more you move, the tighter it gets. Yep. And you see what happened? Oh, Kawhi. Kawhi, Kawhi, Kawhi. When we talk about Kawhi, now he had three points in the fourth quarter, Chris. Three points, one assist. He was one of six from the three-point line. Paul George was terrible for most of the game. Even though that Paul George ended up playing well, he was 8 of 18 from the field. Kawhi Leonard was 9 of 22. He had 26 points. Hell, it took him 22 shots to get it. That's not efficient. Oh, they were efficient. But somebody needs to tell me. With the two best wing defenders, and Chris, you started this, since Jordan and Pip, and they can't do nothing with Luka. Luka told Pat Bell, you too small. And look at him. You know, hey, you know your parents mad at you. When they don't look at you, they look at the ground and say, boy, I'm tired of telling you this. You too small. What they going to do, Skip? You talking about he only had one point. He hadn't done his damage. He had 30 in the first uh, three quarters of the game. And the game was tied with three minutes left. He'd done his damage. And what did I tell you they need to do? Chris, I've been telling Chris, I've been telling Skip Bayless this for the last year and a half. Since they've been out, I say, you get them late in the ball game because they front run. When, Ka- when Kawhi Leonard dunked on Cleaver, what did old Paul George do? Mm. He been Marcus Morris. Mm. Just like when Pat Bell was joined with Dame Lillard, Pat, uh, uh, PJ had nothing to do with it. He come tagging along. He <laughs> Mm. And look what happened. <laughs> Lay the neck again. Mm. Get them in crunch time. Mm. The last three to five minutes of a ball game. And they'll fold like banquet chairs, Chris, at the end of the night. You know how to rent them. You know how to have revival. And you got to put them on fold them banquet chairs. You got to fold them up and set them in the corner. <laughs> That's the Clippers for you right there in crunch time. Mm. I keep telling you this. Your day coming. Your mm. day coming. You're going to meet your destiny on the road you took to avoid it. Mm. You tried to avoid Dane. You tried to avoid Go James. Mm. But Baby Bird got something for you. Got something for you. What did I tell you about Dame and Portland? They're coming for you. No, 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 no. no. They're coming. I told you they're going to beat Denver. I told you they're coming for you. But that's why Ty Lue rested them, because he didn't want to see them. Okay, back to what my friend Chris Broussard opened this segment by saying. I agree with every last word Chris just spake on this show. (laughs) Yet, I will point out that Pandemic P, as in Paul George, as in Playoff P, Mm -hmm. outscored Baby Bird in the fourth quarter 10-1, to and the Clippers still couldn't bring it home. 
And I agree. Rondo played all 12 minutes of the fourth quarter, and even he couldn't figure out the Rubik's Cube of unclutchness that is the Clippers in the fourth quarter. He tried. He did his darndest, but he wound up with only two assists. That won't get you home from Rondo because nobody could make the shot, and he seemed at a loss. Is it your turn or your turn, or maybe it's your turn again? And I thought Paul George was outstanding until about three minutes left in the game. And we could see the <laughs> shot that he hit. He hit the shot that tied the game with three minutes left. And this one just took my breath away. He just pulled right up from 19 feet and said, I got this. This is pandemic P. That, that right there, that's his ninth and tenth point that he scored in the fourth quarter. Uh -huh. And you rhapsodize up against about Baby Bird. It's just pure blasphemy, the phony baloney you spew about <laughs> Luka Doncic. He's a 33% career three-point shooter. And in the fourth quarter, he's 0 for 5 and 0 for 3 from 3. And he shot, if we could see this again, he shot two air balls on one crucial possession. Late in the game, This is a, it's a three-point game, and he shoots one air ball. And then he manages to get the ball back, and he shoots another air ball. That's the one you call Baby Bird. I call him Baby Sparrow because he doesn't belong in the same conversation yeah, yeah, with the great Larry Bird. So the point is, Chris is right. Choke their guts out down the stretch from the free throw line. Marcus Morris goes over to, and Kawhi missed another one. Uh, yeah. And from the three-point line, because with the game on the line, Paul George came down and took a quick three. If we could see this, this is for the game right here. This is it. You're down three. This is to tie it with two minutes left. Mm -hmm. And he missed it wide, yeah. left, and short. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. From that point on, they disintegrated. Yeah, as long as there wasn't no pressure on him. You see what he did? Okay. Wait, wait, well, there the was pressure. pressure with three minutes left, and he tied the game. Hey. Hey, yep. but uh, hold on. Jim, you yeah. got that package? Jim, I need you to give me that package. I need Chris to see this package. I got a little Clippers package for you. Mm. So some highlights of the Clippers. Mm. That this Chris, that uh, 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 Skip Bayless mm. talking about, they're so executed. They're so well coached. Because mm -hmm. I want to know. Now, who got the ball right here? I wonder who got the ball. Who is this shooting the shot? Mid-range. Mm. What is that? Mm. Who, who shot that, Chris? I want to know who got this ball. Now, the mouse out of mid-range. Mm -hmm. Who is that? I just told you he was pathetic. Right. Oh. And that's, that's his game. That's his game. Pathetic. Well, and, and here's pathetic. I already called it. I when told they, you. Go ahead, Chris. When they signed Kawhi, what, two years ago? Yeah. They thought that they would have the best player in every series they played. And, you know, at that time, with Kawhi riding high off the championship, you thought, okay, maybe even against LeBron, maybe even against KD, it was up in the air. And they have, this is their third playoff series with Kawhi. He has not been the best player yet in one of those series. No, no. Luka's mm. better than Kawhi. Luka's better. Yo I mean, was Skip, you can, you know, okay, the air balls and all. Luka is the man. And Kawhi, here's what I want to see. And I know they threw everything at him. They switched. And then late in the game, they double teamed him. That's one reason he had only one point. They double teamed him. He made the right passes to his teammates. But I want to see Kawhi go to Ty Lu and say, give me Luka. He, Kawhi he will. is 29 he years will. old. He's a six-time All-D. He, will he? Yes, I, he I will. I want him to do that. Book say, it. give me Book Luka. Kawhi Leonard and if you got will take over Baby pick, Bird right out of the box. But, 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 but Chris, Kawhi... All right. Chris, I want to see it. Chris. You will. Kawhi hasn't been that defensive guy since he left San Antonio. Because he's saved himself for because offense. The offense. Because now he's more of an offensive-minded player. So he can't. But to have to sit down to that. So you want him to. Because I know a guy. I remember a guy before he got into his mid-30s could sit down in the chair and still give you 30, 10, and 8 in mm. a playoff game. And he did it every game. You know that guy? Well, that, the guy's, guy from that guy's long gone. Hold on. Hold on. Not when he was 29, he wasn't no, that's the, But that's my point, Shannon. He's Kawhi's 29. 29. Mm. He's still supposed to be in his prime. Mm. He should be able to go hard on both ends of the floor. He should be, but he can't. But he, apparently, he can't. And what about Paul George? Wait, wait a second. Kawhi was so bad the other day, he had 26, right, you 10, and 5. Him. Really? Hey, Chris, let me ask you a question, Chris. I ain't really good at math because math was really not my strong suit. Both of them on alternating. So, uh, uh, but you know, once we got out of multiplication timetable, I was I was done with math. But if twenty six points on twenty two shots is that good? Hmm. 
How you gonna have four more points to shot? Here, here is the 20, point. Nine and twenty-two is not good. No, that's what he was. Because of you two, Chris <laughs> saying yellow fever that the Clippers had. All of a sudden, the Dallas Mavericks said, "Oh, so they were tanking for us? Yes. So we got something for you." Yep. They came out shooting with fire in their eyes in Game One. The Clippers did not match their intensity or their urgency in Game One. So here we go. Game two is do or die for my Clippers, and they will do. You watch, because they will come out firing. They will take care of business the way they should have in game one. It will not be this close down the stretch of game two. You're right. They're going to blow y'all out. Mm. Hold on. I thought y'all were the best three-point shooting team. How you going to lay them apart? Hey, how much do do you want on game two? We're blowing y'all out. Want to do five cases? We'll talk about this tomorrow. Okay, we'll talk well, about I'll, this. I'll, do, I'll talk about no, it right no, now. No, 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 I'll, no, no, I'll no, do no, ten no, cases no, right no, now. No. I'll do ten cases. The Clippers have lost four straight playoff games, including those three disasters at the hands of the Nuggets. Well, Kawhi, Kawhi and Paul George must not have been played. They got to win. They got to win games. Hey, Chris, they got to. Win Chris, can you ask me a question? When, yeah. did, start point, <laughs> when did the starting point guard start, stop playing in the fourth quarter? Because Pat Bell can't get on the floor. A defensive guy. Mm. Your starting point guard can't get on the floor in the fourth quarter. And you need to tell me why? Did the Lakers lose game one last year? Well, did they lose game whoa, one? Sure. Whoa, yes. whoa, whoa, Yes. Hold on. Did, does LeBron James play for the Clippers? Mm. I want to know which, which. I'm glad is, he doesn't. Is it because Kawhi? He oh. stunk up the fourth quarter worse than Kawhi Don't did. Don't do that, Skip. Don't do that. You wish you had a guy that could, could be as acclaimed or as accomplished as Goat James. Really? Yes. Passive LeBron. I couldn't even recognize him yesterday. Your guy was Unplugged, a great. Unplugged, disengaged. My, okay. at, at least I got a, I got a, I got an excuse. My guy was passive. That's why he mm. didn't play that well. Uh. What's your excuse for PG and, and Kawhi? I have none. <laughs> Not what I thought. Until game two. Then we'll see. <laughs> Luca going to give it to him yeah. again. Okay, give it. We're ready. Skip, in several playoff games, he's 31, 9, and 10. Yeah. And guess who they come against? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Most of them come against you. Fourth Luke. quarter, one. You got one point. All Way to go, Luca. You got two air balls and one point. He had 30 in the three quarters. Congratulations. He done done his damage. Wow. You fit me, Shannon. Skip he's admitted. baby Larry. He's the new age Larry Bird. That's it. Yeah, new age. That's it. Yeah. No mercy. Trey Young did not disappoint in his playoff debut. He finished with 32 points and led the Hawks to a 107 to 105 win over the Knicks on the road. Trey scored the game-winning bucket as well as seven of the team's final 10 points down the stretch. And after the game, Trey said, quote, when you're in the zone and everybody's chanting F you, it got real quiet at the end. Shit, and how impressive was Trey Young down the stretch? Mm. <laughs> I, you keep on, I, keep, I keep telling you, ice trade. You call it my trade. Mm -hmm. He went to the guard in his first playoff game and did that. That mm. was for you, Spike Lee, and for you, Michael Rappaport. I didn't tell you what Michael Rappaport kept sending me the voicemail yesterday, too. Mm. And I threatened. I said, I'm going to show people on air the messages that I've been sending you, and you won't oh, respond. Uh -oh. <laughs> You're going to do a Rappaport oh. on Rappaport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He called me back. He called me back. <laughs> he called me back. Little Skip, Skip this, 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 he, he's sensational. He was, he was sensational. When you needed him to be sensational, yep. he was sensational. And I don't know what's gotten into these, these guys in their first playoff games. You see Booker. You yep. see John Moran. Mm -hmm. You see Trey Young. Skip, these guys, Luca Lad. I mean, what do you what do you say? These guys are just growing up right in front of you. Yep. And I thought the 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 Knicks had really seized control of the ball game. Skip midway through the fourth quarter. I was like, okay, now they're just asserting themselves. But Trey's like, nope, I'm not gonna let y'all win this one. He was sensational down the stretch. Okay, I will give you. He was very impressive. I found it a little hard to believe that the Knicks crowd was chanting "F you" to Trey Young in his first ever playoff mm -hmm. game. It's not like he's Reggie Miller. It's not like he's done them in before because he's never played them in the playoffs before. Right. It's been years since they've been in the playoffs. They do, but Skip, that's the Knicks fan. They okay, turn I, everybody's I, a villain. If you if you the best player on the opposing team, you somehow become the villain. He's five eleven. <laughs> How big a threat is a little five eleven guy? <laughs> The, the best thing that he's done this year is he quit jacking up logo threes like he's trying to be Steph Curry. His three-point attempts per game have fallen from 10 a year ago to only six a game this year. And the best thing he did yesterday was he shot only three threes, made one of them. And in the fourth quarter, look how many he shot. How about zero? Okay. Now, 
just to be objective about this, because you're talking about ice cream freezing <laughs> over here. Well, I, I was freezing a little bit on, on Trey's behalf, because if, if we could see what happened in the fourth quarter down the stretch with a minute 29 left in that game, he comes down, if we could see this play, this is a minute 29, and he just throws it right out of bounds. Okay, that was the first time. Then he comes down, next possession, it's 55 seconds left, and he gets caught, and he doesn't have anywhere to go with it, and he throws it across court, and he hits, I think it was R.J. Barrett right Bob in the down. back. Okay, it's it's another turnover. He hits the Knicks that defender right in the back, hits him in the back of the pass, and somehow it goes loose, and Bogey gets it and just bam, drains it. That, that's <laughs> that's to tie the game right there. No. That was a huge play. That could have been back-to-back -back huge turnovers. Right. He could have been the lowercase goat of the game. He could have been the reason they lost the game. Then he comes down a few seconds later, and he drives it on R.J. Barrett, if we could see this, and he gets a foul call that I – I couldn't really see. That was a foul. I, I oh, don't, he the mouth at that. Really? Oh, yeah, he the mouth at that. I don't see it, and Thibodeau couldn't see it either because he he challenged it and he lost because oh, the yeah, not gonna, yeah. there's no foul on that play. I, I can't right. see any contact. Yeah. And to his credit, would you believe little my straight shot nine free throws in mm -hmm. the game, and they were all in the fourth quarter, and he made every last one of them. Were you watching LeBron yeah. James? That's how you do it. Skip, but That's I, how you win the game. I think the biggest, the most amazing thing is the Knicks is known for defense, and yep. they gave the Hawks 36 points in that fourth quarter. Okay, and and down the, the last play of the game, we can see the, the little floater that yeah. he makes. Thibodeau puts Neil Aquina in just for this. He only yeah. played 32 seconds in the whole game, and all he's supposed to do is stop Trey Young, and Trey Young just blows by yeah. him. He, but he blew right Neil by Aquina, him. hold on. You got, they had to tell him that Taj was coming uh, from uh, the uh, back side. You yeah. got to stay front side just on stay. him. Just yes. stay, stay in front of him. Stay in front of him. And he let him loose. He let him go right down the lane, and, and that's the best shot that he can shoot are those little the flo floaters. Oh, yeah, the floaters. He is deadly with the floaters. I give him that. I give him that. But he was very fortunate to survive that game yeah, on the road. Ain't no point to that. Ain't and, no point and I don't think there's anybody chanting. There was a yeah, chant. You heard the man said it. Yeah. He I said, guess. but that. Yeah, well, he shut him up. Spike, Spike was leading the chance. Yeah, you think so? <laughs> I don't think Spike was leading that chance. But Skip, you know how the Knicks crowd is. Yep. It started with Reggie, be it Kobe, be it Jordan, be it LeBron. The opposing best player is going to catch it from that crowd. Mm. But maybe you should be nice to them, and then they won't light you up. Mm. Okay. I will give you this. He is growing up right before your very eyes. He is a gifted passer, <laughs> and he can score it. Yes. He just can't shoot it. He's a, he can shoot it. He's a 34% career three-point shooter. Might be oh, really? oh, yeah, really? He might be Junior I, Steph. Yeah, he might be Junior Steph Curry. He is exactly not <laughs> Junior Steph. But he can do what he does. And once he cleaned up his act a little bit, he's pretty great. Ten assists with two turnovers for 35 minutes. You can't ask for more than that, Skip. Yeah, I almost mean, had a third turnover that would have cost them the game. Get almost. A man. Why you won't get a man his credit? Well, I, I'm giving him credit. I'm no. being objective as opposed to somebody across the table. I don't expect Julius Randle to play as bad tomorrow night as mm -hmm. he played Last night. Well, I yesterday. hope not, because that was horrendous. Yeah, but Skip, he was he averaged in the three regular season games. He was 37, 12, and 7 mm. in three games against the Hawks. Yep. And he wasn't no he wasn't anywhere close to that. Six of twenty-three. Yeah. He'll be better than that. Knicks will be better. This is gonna be a long, hard series. Well, oh, oh, oh ice tray. They still ain't got no answer for ice tray. So, so you want ice tray or baby bird? Who you got? We in. Oh, you huh? know, baby, baby bird's a better player right now. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. So that's it. Next question, right? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> no mercy. Tomorrow night on FS1, two teams with a little bit of history collide as Mookie Betts leads the Dodgers against Jose Altuve and the Astros. Coverage begins tomorrow, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. LeBron suffered his own shoulder injury in yesterday's game when Chris Paul came in to box out LeBron after a free throw. Greg Bogo called out Paul for the play, saying, quote, My view was an overly aggressive box out, dangerous play where Braun was in the air and got undercut. Anthony Davis also voiced his displeasure with the play, saying it was, quote, a dangerous play, and that's what you don't want. Shannon, was this a dangerous play in your eyes? It was, Skip, yeah, because, as you know, he has LeBron's arm. LeBron is trying to elevate, and he's trying to box LeBron out. Now, in the process, so I'm pulling one way, LeBron is going up the other way, and so obviously his legs are going to go out from under him, Skip. It's just, that's just, it's just physics. I mean, there is no, no, no other way around it. Um, 
for me, I wouldn't have had a problem if he'd have never grabbed LeBron's arm. This is just a good, hard playoff block out. And that's what you want to have happen. A guy that's substantially bigger than you are, you don't want him to walk you down and walk you up under the basket and be able to get the rebound. This is six feet versus six, six nine. nine. Okay. Yeah. Is Chris, you think Chris Paul weighs 200? So I'll give him 200, 205? Yeah. Against 250, mm-hmm. 260. Yep. So he's like, stay here. So if he hadn't grabbed his arm, Skip, I wouldn't have had a problem with it. Mm. But because he grabbed his arm and he could potentially hurt him, I think that, that's the issue that I have with that. But this was prior to, uh, uh, up until that point, Skip, this was just a good playoff box out. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got a whole lot to say about this play. <laughs> Starting with, I have never seen this before. I might have missed it, but I've watched a lot of basketball. I used to play a lot of basketball, and I've never seen the guy who's back for the defensive team, who's behind the shooter, right. run right. all the way through the circle in front right. of the shooter right. to try to box him out. Right. Because usually the two guys in the third spots, right. they look across the lane right. and say, you got the shooter, right. I got the shooter, right. right? The two guys in the third position. And Chris is early into the circle, right. so that's a violation. Right. And then he runs in front of LeBron and tries to get up under him and screen him off. Right. That's fine. I'm, I'm cool with that. But remember, Chris Paul has a long reputation oh, yeah. for cheap shots and dirty plays. Mm-hmm. He does. And I wouldn't go dirty on this. It's a little cheap. It's borderline dirty. Right. But he does grab hold of LeBron's arm, right. which was shocking to me because – Chris has got his own problems with his own he's shoulder. Right, exactly. And, and he's pulling. And then LeBron really exaggerates it. And he was trending all the rest of the evening as Le Flop because he flopped on the play to drive home the point that he deserved a foul right. on the play, right? Right. So he's writhing on the floor like he's it hurt. hurt and yeah. I don't think he's hurt. I think he's just fine. Well, I could be wrong. But I, I just see the way Chris Paul, that you know, right now, Chris Paul has put our friendship up on the shelf. So, I, so if I'm LeBron, I see how that's, that's how we doing that. So you think it hurt his feelings more than his left arm? Well, I'm sure his, I'm sure his left arm was hurt, but I just I see for me, I just need to know how we gonna do this. Are we gonna be friends? You know, hey, things that I would normally do in a game to yep. somebody else, I'm not gonna do to you. Mm-hmm. Or I'm trying to win the game, and so all bets are off until the series is over. Well, if I'm LeBron, I see how you gonna do it, Chris Paul. Okay. So that's how you're gonna play. Well, hey, okay. Well, hey, what's understood don't need to be said. Okay, now back to Chris Paul. The, the thing that has baffled me the most about his career is he's the president of the Players Association. <laughs> yeah. And yet the Players Association's president is notorious for, for cheap he, shots and dirty play. In fact, I've made the case sitting in this seat before. He's the dirtiest player of this era. <laughs> and you could argue yeah. he might be the dirtiest player in an overall body of work. Oh. In, in the history of pro oh, he basketball. Got, he got Rodman in him. He got <laughs> Rodman, but he's beyond Rodman because if we go back to Julius Hodge in the ACC. Oh, yeah, yeah, he remember got the ACC tur- yeah. tournament? He got him below the belt. He yeah. got suspended for he him. Did. He just popped him right, you know, where. Yeah, in the man right? region, yes. And he's done it to KD. He's done it to Chris Kamen. And then he got Mark Gasol good at the end of a playoff game yeah. in Memphis. Oh, he fired. He straight fired he on just, him. He just rushed right up to him and just fired on him. I, I can't believe he gets away with it. And he still is able to do all of the State Farm ads. And they're great. Well, but, Skip, I think the thing is because he's small. And they I say, well, so. well, he's, I mean, really, he should, I mean, he, look how small he is. He's in the land with the Giants, and he just got to compete, you know. I mean, because a man, a, 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 somebody LeBron's size, man, they frown at Dennis Rodman. Like, all that stuff that he does is unnecessary. But Chris Paul seemingly, he like, he gets a pass for doing it. Okay, so I believe that the State Farm shtick that they do of Chris and Cliff Paul right. has benefited him greatly because I think a lot of people see a lot of Cliff Paul yeah, he, and Chris Paul he, off the court yeah. because he does have some of that yes, going on yes. and he is, he's a great spokesman for the league. Yes. It's just that he's got a screw loose. Yeah, he got and, and when he gets on the floor, he will do literally anything to win, including... Dirty plus. Right. But if I if I'm LeBron, I'm gonna do I'm just like Russ when uh um who you uh, uh the guy that uh, that stepped who? on the Kawhi's foot. What's his name? Pachula. Oh Zaza yeah. Pachulia. For cheap shot. When he when him. he when he sucked that hard pick on uh, on Russ, yeah, and Russ said, I'm gonna get his you know what back. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I get him back. Okay. I get so him back. do you think there's now bad blood? No, ain't no bad blood. No, 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 no skip. I'm, I'm just gonna get him back. Mm. And then we're gonna be we'll be cool. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Then you'll be cool. We're gonna be cool, yeah. 
back. What if he wants to then get you back? Now, hey, well, we... Well, guess what? We just going to keep getting each other back. Skip, I was in a game, we was in Minnesota, and I blew an assignment, and John got hit right smack dab in the back. Because the you missed a block? Because I missed a block. I was supposed, I didn't hear the call. It was audible, we, and, and I, didn't, I didn't get the call. So I went out to well, catch it. Maybe you, your heart wasn't in no, blocking. No, 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 no Skip. I, didn't, I really didn't hear the call. Okay. I went out, the guy hits John right in the back. We come by about three, about uh, two series later. Throw a far cross, uh, rest his soul, Orlando Thomas. He mm -hmm. died, I think he had LLS. Mm. Caught me with his knee right up under the chin. I'm sprawled out. I come back to the sideline, I'm sitting down, you know, I'm shaking my head, I'm a little groggy. Seven walks right by me, Elway walks by, right by me and say, hey, we even now. Oh, <laughs> touche. <laughs> Your quarterback yep. said that to you. <laughs> yep. Okay. We even now. Okay, okay, you got me. Okay. I, I bet I ain't missing no more blocks. So what do you think LeBron would do to retaliate tomorrow night? Oh, I'm going to catch him with an elbow. An elbow? And then yeah. walk by him and say, we're even now? Yeah. We're okay. level. Dap him up. Yeah. Yep. I, I don't think Chris is going to be cool with that. Well, because he, he, he turns into some psycho. That's all right. I turn into something else, too. Do you? Yeah, we be two fools together. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Well, uh, so, which one is more hurt, Chris Paul or LeBron's arm? Which, which... Oh, I think Chris Paul. I think Chris Paul arm is more hurt. Well, but because, because that's his right arm. At least it's, I think it's LeBron's. It's LeBron's left arm. So, would you agree that it was La Flop yesterday? No, it wasn't La Flop. He did it. No, 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 real no. floppy to me. No, 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 no. Huh? Skip, Skip, the man. First of all, you pulling my arm this way and you going up under me that way. Come on, Skip. How am I going to protect myself? You know, it, it, it's hard. I mean, the, the heavier person is, the more, if, the, the more, if you fall, it's going to hurt more. Mm. You know that. Look like you needed an ambulance. No, and then all of a sudden, he was okay. I don't know what happened. It was a miracle. Paul Pierce had a, had a, a wheelchair to come take him up the court. Well, I thought LeBron was going to need one, but there of course, go. he was playing on one leg already. There you go. So yeah. he's playing with one leg and one arm, that poor man. And watch what we do. Yeah. And watch what we do. Yeah. We're going to put that one leg in, in their butt tomorrow. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your day comes with it. I want you to have that. See that energy that you're having right now? Your, your day is coming in game three. That's when your game is. Oh, really? Game three for what? Yeah. Game three of the series. No, we play tomorrow. They play well, tomorrow. I, I got it. That's gonna be a cakewalk. First, cakewalk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. Oh, so y'all gonna beat us when we first when we go back to Staple on Thursday? Y'all gonna get us? Huh? No mercy. The Grizzlies beat the Warriors on Friday to take the eighth seed and have kept that momentum going with a big win last night. Memphis took game one from the Jazz on the road thanks to Dylan Brooks and John Morant combining for 57 points. So, Shannon, how impressive were the Grizzlies Friday and Sunday night? Skip, the Grizzlies were, I was more concerned about them. That's why they were to lose that game to Golden State. They're better than people think. They got young, hungry guys. Valanchunas is a monster on the board. And John Morant has been great the last two games. 35 on Friday night and then another, then 26 last night. Dylan Brooks did a great job of, of guarding Steph Curry as good as you can do, taking Steph Curry. And then he drops 31 last night. Skip, this team, they better get Donovan Mitchell back because I'm not so sure they can win this series without Donovan Mitchell. I agree. I want to say publicly that I believe we're watching two very young men turn into not just regular season stars, playoff mm -hmm. stars. They're playing without fear. They're playing with raw emotion, especially, well, both of them, but Dylan Brooks just plays flat out angry. He don't care. He don't care. He's he, not afraid of no, anything no, or no, anybody. Nope, nope, nope. You can have Steph Curry. I'll take, you know, like, uh, let me just have him. And he took him as dominantly and effectively as any mm -hmm. single defender I've ever seen try right. to play Steph Curry. Skip, you know when they, play, when they play the Lakers, he guards LeBron. He does. You know, I don't care from Steph Curry 6'3 to LeBron 6'9 and anybody in between. He wants that challenge, and he goes at him. It's not like, okay, I'm just going to guard you. You got to guard me too. He just looks like a man. <laughs> he does. He and, does. And Ja is, is so impressive yeah. because in the two fourth quarters last night and Friday night, he just said, give me the ball and get out of my yes. way because he's like Trey Young in that he can just get in the lane right. anytime he wants. And you talk about floaters. And Elevate with that left, yeah, that the left hand, yeah. high off the glass. Yeah. He makes shots. It's like globetrotter shots. And I'm saying this is pretty special stuff you're watching from these two with Valanciunas. Yeah. And it's a deep team, Jaron Jackson Jr. They, they, the, they Allen, got the, the guy y'all got, Kyle Allen, the one you got from, uh, yeah. from you guys, San yeah. Antonio. Yeah. Skip, I don't know. Donovan, I don't know if Donovan, the ankle, the 16 games he's missed. Yeah. But Skip, they can, I don't believe they can win this series without him. Whew.
Man, I don't know. Even Grayson Allen makes some big yeah, shots. He, he did. He made some big shots the other night, too. Yep. Oof, well, that momentum they are holding on to, and that's a tough place to win as well. Guys, great stuff. So many great games to react to. And uh, Undisputed is back at the same time tomorrow morning. <laughs> the herd is on now. Have a great day, guys. <laughs> Beauty.